College Football Saturday is brought to you by Universal Athletic Service for the athlete in all of us. Your Montana Ford stores. Ford, built for the road ahead. See your Montana Ford store today. Northwestern Energy, dedicated to serving you. And Stewart Title, excellent customer service by its. <laughs> Welcome back to Washington Grizzlies Stadium, and it is halftime. It is 24 to 3 in favor of the Montana Grizzlies. We are waiting for uh, Portland State head coach Tim Walsh, and I'm sure he had a pretty long discussion with his guys at the at the halftime, Grady, and uh, we'll see what his comments are. But I'm sure he's a, a frustrated guy because this team uh, offensively has been putting up some numbers this year, and they're just not doing that today here in Missoula. Yeah, they definitely had to get on the chalkboard and make some adjustments. And it'll be interesting to see what he does say because whether they felt like their game plan just wasn't executed uh, by, by their players or whether maybe they uh, were kind of outfoxed a little bit by Montana. We've already talked about the great job we feel like Montana did in all three areas with their game plan. Uh, but, you know, college coaches, that's what they're, they're paid for, and they <laughs> usually do a great job. And it'll be I always love to see what kind of changes and adjustments are made in, at halftime. Let's go down to John, who's standing by with head coach Tim Walsh. Thanks a lot, Jeremy, with Coach Walsh. Coach, it's a 24-3 deficit, but uh, hopefully trying to get back in the second. What are you trying to do? Well, we, have, we leave the conference with the least amount of penalties. We had 10 penalties in the first half. We haven't turned the ball over in three weeks. We turned the ball over. Special teams has been one of our fortes. We gave up a punt return. Uh, we're giving up touchdowns on deep end. We're just not playing well, and uh, for whatever reason, and they're doing some good things, but we're causing a lot of our own demise. Well, good luck in the second half, Coach. Thanks a lot. Coach Walsh, back upstairs. Thanks a lot, John. And, uh, you know, a, a classy guy. He's certainly the face of this Portland State program. He's been there for 13 years now. He's moved him from Division II to Division I AA. He's got the program on the up and up as they're at the top of the league right now and certainly coming in here and competing. But you could see some frustration on his face there, too, as he uh, made, tried to make some adjustments and met with his team at halftime. Yeah, and as I mentioned at the beginning of the, of the game, when you, when you think about each team in this conference and kind of maybe what defines them, you know, you know, obviously Montana Grizzlies I mean year in and year out consistency I talked to Timmy Hawk this morning and he said how challenging it is for knowing that there's a big target on your back and every single week if you're the Montana Grizzlies you're going to get the other team's very very best because you're the, you're the target you're who everybody's after and think about what this program has done being consistent and coming out every single year and every single game and I think that's the mark of Portland State is they just have some games where they don't show up they don't play the level of football every week that they're capable of it has to be frustrating for Coach Walsh, and I'm sure him and his staff are searching for answers. Well, the Grizz change it up a little. They kick it deep to Sean Bodiford, and Bodiford brings it all the way back out to the 30-yard line. He takes a shot there. They were kicking it short to about the 20, but Pete Sloan kicked it deep there. Bodiford took to about the 30-yard line, and that's where Portland State will set up. And we'd like to say hello to everybody watching this game in Oregon today, the Portland area on uh, Channel 14 out there, and uh, hope you're enjoying this game. I know you're not enjoying the outcome, but hopefully you're enjoying the broadcast here and. Uh, Portland State has a lot of time left. There's a lot of football to go, and uh, with the Oregon Ducks on a bye week this week, I know lots of people in Oregon enjoying this football game today as it's 24-3, and Portland State has it first and 10. The ball is at the 31. Sawyer Smith comes out throwing, and they kick it out. There's a fumble. It looks like they call it down, though. That's uh, number 80 on the play, Kenneth Mackens, who has also played a role on special teams today. Well, it's a nice first little play. Come out in a too tight set. Just throw a quick hitch. Uh, real important, I think, for Portland State to establish Sawyer Smith. Get him some confidence. Get a few completions. Get that completion percentage back up where it has been the last two weeks into that 70% and uh, get him rolling in this second half. So they pick up about four yards on the play there. It is second down and six from the 35. And they hand it to Ruben. Ruben dances his way for about two. It's going to bring up third and three. They'll mark it at the 38. Boy, Portland State's offensive line gets off the ball so well. It has to be kind of a difference for them this week. They're getting off the ball. They have to be frustrated because they feel like they're moving the line of scrimmage. You can see right here they get good push, but the Grizzly linebackers and safeties are so good. Kyle Ryan and Thomas coming up and filling. And even though you feel like, man, we got good push, man, those backers filling, you only end up with a two or three-yard gain. 
This Portland State team took Boise State to the very end at Broncos Stadium. They're a good football team. They know about hostile environments. We'll see if they react here. It's third down. They throw a short out, and it's turned upfield nicely by Adam Whitehead, the big tight end, and it's a first down, a key first down for Portland State. They could not afford a three and out there. No, and I like the play calling by Portland State. Again, get Sawyer Smith going, throw a quick hitch, run a nice little zone play, and now just come with a quick out by your tight end and uh, two short passes, two for two. You're moving your sticks. That's what Portland State had to do uh, to get themselves rolling here in the second half. You know, Boise State has the longest home winning streak in the country, and Portland State had a lead on them in the fourth quarter at Boise, so they're not going to lose their poise here, and we'll see some uh, veteran leadership from some of their guys, and including Narcisse up front as they have it first and ten. Ruben kicks it to the outside, dances his way for nice yardage on first down. They're across midfield. Again, a nice sure tackle by Torrey Thomas coming up from his safety spot. If he doesn't make that tackle around the legs of Joe Rubin, Joe Rubin is gone. Secondary and backers have been doing an outstanding job of coming up and making solid tackles on Joe Rubin. You'll see right here, he is this, this tackle away. Torrey wow. Thomas from taking it the distance. Big Allen signs is back in there. He's big on the... Uh, Stuffing the run up the middle there as Ruben had to kick it to the outside on that play. It's second and four just across midfield at the 49. They're operating out of the eye. Ruben has it, and he has a huge hole, and Joe Ruben almost breaks it for six, takes it down to the 30-yard line, and Portland State making a statement early on here in the third quarter. Running behind his excellent fullback, Kennett. We've already talked about him, what a good player he is. And Grizz fans right now are really happy that Torrey Thomas is on our team without him. Uh, there's two touchdown saving tackles possibly already for Torrey Thomas. And I think the O-line from Portland State got a little talking to at halftime because yes. they're really coming off the football and opening up some huge holes. They are coming off the ball. If you just watch right now on your screen, boy, those guys in white are getting off the football and trying to take, take over this line of scrimmage. First and 10 at the 31. There's Ruben again, and there is a nice tackle by that Montana defense, and uh, what a play on defense there by the Grizz, and Tyler Joyce just bottled that up real nice. Again, I, I think it's linebacker play. Tyler Joyce and Kyle Ryan right now are the difference. Uh, you know, the D-line the is playing well, but you gotta give Portland Straits old line credit. Even right there, they are moving the line of scrimmage, but the linebackers from Montana are finding those windows, those open windows, they're running to them, and they're making sure tackles on a very good running back. Second and 10 from the 31. Portland State trying to get something going here in the third quarter as they are down big, 24-3. to three. Sawyer Smith, and it's a kick out to Botterford. Botterford has it. He puts some moves on, gets about five yards, so it's going to bring up third and five from the 26. But that's what I like about what Portland State's doing right here as an answer is get the ball into the hands of your athletes. Joe Rubin, obviously he needs a lot of carries, a lot of touches, but that's really all they went to in the first half. Go ahead and flip it out there to a great athlete like Botterford and just let him try to do something with it. The more you spread the ball around to your athletes and give them a chance, I think the more you're going to put pressure on the defense. I still don't see Floyd Bierman on the field yet. His suspension has expired. He had to sit out the first half. Not out on the field yet as the Grizz go to a 3-4 defense on third and five here. Mike Murphy getting some pressure, and he got his hand on the football and bats it down. And I'll tell you, the offensive line for Portland State can't handle Murph today. Well, I'm not sure that many people in the <laughs> conference, let alone the country, can handle Murph when he gets out wide in this 34 defense. You can't see it really well here, but when he gets that speed rush, there is just no way that an offensive tackle is going to be able to contend with that. What Sawyer Smith has to think about doing is, is being aware of that. It's tough from the backside, but being aware of that and just stepping up in the pocket, give your offensive tackle a chance there to run him around the edge. 43-yard field goal attempt by Eric Azor. Azor has had a tough year. He had the game winner against Montana State, but he has not had a good year kicking the football. And that hits the right upright and bounces back, and Portland State has nothing to show for their impressive drive. 
Man, talk about taking the wind out of your sails. It was an impressive drive, Jeremy. They they strung together some good plays, uh, put together some good first downs, and to come away with nothing, really disheartening when they needed to get some points to open this second half. Does that deflate the attitude of a defense, too, when they're like, man, we just can't get anything going? Yeah, and this is where you really see what kind of team chemistry and unity that a, that a, that a ball club has, because if the defense comes out and they're ticked off of their offense, sometimes <laughs> they can let down and really, really gets ugly. But if they come out, if the team unity and chemistry is good they'll come out and get a stop and fight hard to get it back for their offense so the Grizz take over on the 26 and we could see a big dose of number 38 today as he is moving the pile then takes a big hit but he gets about five yards on first down well, I'd say as a quarterback, Cole Burquist as a freshman quarterback, a luxury that he has is number 38 in the backfield. He does not have to win football games by himself. All he has to do is just let, run the machine, uh, execute, stay within himself, hand the ball off to number 38, and then what becomes fun is you hand the ball off to number 38, defense is going to be stacking up. Now you run a little play action and you can get some big plays. You know, and the Grizz are running a lot out of the eye today. The power eye putting a fullback in the ball game as Lex gets no gain there, maybe loses a yard. It'll bring up third and five, but they're running out of that power eye formation, and they're using some of their backup tight ends as Ross Brunel was in there at the fullback position there. We saw Kyler Knoll earlier in the ball game. Yeah, Rob Fennessy told me this morning that they, they saw on film that, that they thought they could get in the eye, which would keep the backers uh, lined up a little more traditional. And, you know, rather than using off-back sets and slide the backers, they lined up in the eye, and then they could call the play the way that they wanted it. Third and fourth, the 32. Cole Bergquist has some running room. He tucks it and runs. He's right <laughs> at the stick, and the tackle is made, and the tackle may have pushed him over the first down marker. That's Cole Smith, the defensive end out of Springfield, Oregon. Absolutely. Great hustle by Cole Smith, but unfortunately, because he was chasing Bergquist from behind, you'll see on the replay a chance to stop him a little bit short, but because he's chasing him from be behind, the momentum <laughs> takes him to the first down. So it's first and 10 for Montana. The ball is marked at the 37 after the missed field goal by Portland State. The Grizz have set it up at the 37. They have a first down. It looked like maybe a bit of a broken play there as Cole takes a shot, tucks it and runs, gets no gain on the play. He does get up, but uh, that was number 57 on the stop there, Ryan Friesen, who we've mentioned many times throughout the day here. Well, I talked about Cole reading that defensive end and, and either giving the ball to Lex if the defensive end stays home or keeping it if he chases Lex. Well, that time clearly Cole made the wrong read. The defensive and stayed home. He still kept the ball. Now he has really nowhere to go. And you don't like Cole taking those kinds of shots. Second and 10. They hand it to Lex Hilliard. And Lex Hilliard is running people over and gets across midfield. And there's the horse of the Grizz just running it right at the Vikings. Well, in number 17, safety Charles Manigo, he comes up and unlike the great play of number 22 for Portland State in the first half. This is different. He, he meets him a little bit too high and gets run over. And that's what Grizz fans are used to seeing happen to safeties when they come try to take on Lex Hilliard head on. You know, if you're, if you're a safety, you certainly don't want to go shoulder to shoulder <laughs> with Lex Hilliard. You want to go low because if you go high on Lex Hilliard, he'll win that battle every time. And J.R. Waller is in there right now. Yeah, and he Waller loses there. two yards back to the 45-yard line. It'll bring up second and 12. Well, this is tough now for Cole because obviously running the football, uh, Portland State's going to pack the box and, and blitz you, and it's tough to, to know whether you want to audible. You definitely want to just pound the rock and keep running the football. But uh, when they start packing the box, the tendency is or the, you want to try to audible out of it and get something pass-wise. Cole Bergquist out of the shotgun on second and 12. He's looking for Talmadge on the quick slant, and he has him a perfect throw, and that's going to bring up third and five right there. Well, they keep doing a nice job attacking Odell Jackson, but you can, you can see the talent of number two, Jackson, for Portland State. He is a good cover corner, and there's no question why they're putting him on Montana's number one receiver. Even if you do catch it on him, he is right there. Tell you what, a real surprise. Montana State was up on NAU 22 to nothing at the half. It's in the fourth quarter. It's 22 14. Bobcats over NAU. So, Jerome Sowers Club showing a little fight down in Bozeman today. And there's a kick out. 
That is a great play to Rob Schulte. Rob Schulte out of the backfield in the ball game. On third and five, Cole makes a good throw. Yeah, we talked about Sawyer Smith doing it for Portland State, just making that good little five-yard out pass or five-yard hitch pass. Here you see Cole Berquist start with a slant, get five yards, and now come back with a little flat route right on the money, moving the chains. That's, that's what your job is as a quarterback. Weber State leads Idaho State 10-7, and Weber State has shown they are a very good football team. And uh, they beat Eastern Washington in Cheney last week, which certainly is uh, hard to do. And Cole Berquist tucks it and runs, and he is wrapped up nicely there. And I think that is the first time today we have called Joey King's name. He's one of the top players on that defense, but he makes a big tackle there for Portland State. Yeah, Joey King has a lot of speed. They talk about the way he flies around and runs for that Portland State defense. And uh, you're right, there's been a couple guys that are great players for Portland State's defense that we haven't called their names today, which means Montana's doing a good job of taking them out of the game, finding them, getting on them, and blocking them. Second and 10 from the 31. There's the handoff to J.R. Waller, and Waller tried to cut it up field, gets about three yards. It's going to be third and seven. They're going to mark it at about the 28-yard line. Lex Hilliard really did a nice job there on that lead block. It looked like the play might go for, for the for quite a ways, yeah. but uh, Portland State again on an outside play. You'll see the little sweep play out of a different formation. Lex with a nice lead block, looked like a good hole, but Portland State does a nice job. Looks like uh, that was Keanu under, yeah, Keanu underneath the pile again, just doing a nice job of tripping up J.R. Waller. Keanu is a good football player. Portland State has taken a timeout. We're going to take a short timeout as well. This is Grizzly football only on Montana's news station. It's third and seven for Montana. The ball is marked at the 28-yard line. 5.50 to go, third quarter. The Grizzlies in control, 24-3, but it is third and seven. Cole Bergquist out of the shotgun, and we have the stack ladder uh, formation, if you will. Cole Bergquist, and he has John Talmadge wide open, and Talmadge drops it, and Talmadge has set out a couple of games, and maybe he's just a little rusty on uh, those balls right there. Well, you know, I really think what it is, you, you, I've seen it today on three hitch routes. When he is, is stopped on a hitch, and he knows he's going to potentially take a shot in that back, his back is badly bruised, and it is sore, yeah. and I give him credit for being out here. Not to make excuses, but I think he's trying to get away from that shot and he's just taken off a little too early worried about taking a shot in that lower back he saw his head turn a little bit there yep. before the ball came and now it's a 45 yard field goal attempt for carpenter from the right hash eight in a row for dan carpenter what a kick dan carpenter is on fire and so are the grizz it's 27 to 3 540 to go third quarter stay with us folks Five forty-one to go in the third quarter. Jeremy Jorgensen and Grady Bennett with you this afternoon. Grizz football here on Montana's news station. Here's the scoring drive brought to you by MontanaGrizzlies.com. Twelve plays, forty-six yards, chewed up four fifty-four as uh, Monty's getting down with it there. Forty-six yard field goal by Dan Carpenter is eighth in a row. For all the latest information and statistics, log on to MontanaGrizzlies.com. And we'd also like to remind you, coming up near the end of the game, we will present the Northwestern Energy Player of the Game. North Western Energy is proud to support Montana Grizzly football and uh, the Grizz are set to kick off here. Pete Sloan getting set and it's 27 to 3 Montana. Bodiford is back deep as is Kenneth Mackins and uh, Portland State has two deep and Pete Sloan kicks it off and he kicks it deep and uh, Mackins has it at the goal line. Kenneth Mackins bringing it out and he is buried at the 17 good special teams i think tyler corwin was in on that the backup linebacker well it's always fun to see those guys that get selected to be on that kickoff team that's their chance to play that's their chance to fly down and get in on some action and i tell you what brady green is a guy I talked to coach kowalski about him today on the return blocking the ball with 26 on the return team we'll go half the distance from the goal first down I mean, he's a young man that you really have to admire. Obviously, he's not going to play very much when you're behind a guy like, well, two guys like yeah. uh, 
Lex Hilliard and J.R. Waller. But I tell you what, he loves those special teams. He sells out. He gives a great effort. You saw a couple kickoffs ago. He got his helmet knocked off. He's going to fly down there and give you a great effort. And Tyler Corwin getting a chance to show the kind of player he's going to be for Montana on that last kickoff. And look who's at the bottom of your screen in the defensive end spot. That's number 53, Croy Bierman. Bierman back in the game after his... Uh, Half suspension has expired, and the crowd is into it, and Joe Rubin gets maybe a yard, and it's good to see Bierman out there. I know he felt bad about the personal foul late in the game last week, and certainly he's not that kind of player, and uh, he had to sit out the first half, but he's back out there, and that's a, a done deal. Now we can put that to rest. Yeah, that's right, and when those things happen, all you can do is ask your players to learn from it, you know, ask all your team to learn a lesson and, you know, stay disciplined, stay focused, and it's good to see him back out there. Second and eight, the ball is marked at the 11-yard line. There was the penalty, obviously, on the return, and it backed Portland State up into a tough, difficult situation. That north end zone, the loudest spot of Washington Grizzly, and Mike Murphy coming again. They do get it off, and it is complete to the tight end, Scott Weaver, and Mike Murphy is down in the backfield. Murphy got some pressure, but Murphy was banged up a little last week, and Mike Murphy, the dynamic pass rusher, is down on the field. We certainly hope he is okay. He had a red jersey on most of the week in practice, which means no contact, and we'll see what happened here on the play. Yeah, you know, it's hard to tell right here. He gets good pressure, comes in late, wraps him up. It's it's hard to see anything that might have happened right there, but I tell you, there's certain guys, when you're a fan of a team, there's certain guys you do never want to see stay down, and Mike Murphy right now is one of them from Montana, number 90. You don't want to see him get hurt. It looks like he's jogging off. Yeah. Looks like he's going to be okay. He's a tough, tough guy. <laughs> Mike Murphy, uh, certainly a, a physical football player, and Jack Johnson puts those physical football players out. They know how to play the game. They play hard, and they're tough-nosed kids, and Mike Murphy certainly a staple that Jack Johnson program at CMR. It's first and 10 at the 22, and they fake it to Ruben. A nice play fake by Sawyer Smith, and he has it complete to Brendan Ferrino, and that's one of the few times we've seen Sawyer Smith take a chance deep, and I think they're going to have to continue to do that. Well, and it's, it's just kind of surprising to me, and it surprised me the entire first half when you've got a great running back like Joe Rubin. I would expect a lot more play action, especially when you know you're going to get man-to-man -man coverage for Montana. You're going to get eight guys in the box trying to stop a great back, and you got two really fast, good receivers. Why not play fake a little bit and take some shots down the field? Really the first time they've done it all day. Sawyer Smith really executed that fake nicely, too, just like you teach the quarterbacks to do it. First and 10 at the 35 after the big gainer, Smith to Ferrino. Ruben in the backfield now, and it looks like a checkoff for Smith, and he has his receiver. It's Ferrino again, and he has about nine yards on first down. A good tackle by Tuff Harris from Colstrip, Montana. Well, the Grizzly defense stiffened down here last time and, and forced a field goal that went off the upright, but I still like Portland State's first two drives. Yeah. First drive was good. They drove down. They did what I think you know should have been the game plan in the first half, and now again, they're getting their ball, the ball to their athletes. They're mixing up a little bit of play action. That's a great first down play, nine-yard gain. Really opens the playbook up on second and one here. Shows that Tim Walsh is a great coach. There you see the numbers on Sawyer Smith. Tim Walsh, uh, even though his team was well down, he made some nice adjustments at halftime, and they're moving the football. Sawyer Smith hands it to Ruben. Ruben's going to have a first down at the 23, and I think you can see that Tim Walsh and the Vikings did make some adjustments, and, you know, I think this uh, team offensively is a real good football team, and they're, they're staying, you know, composed and uh, moving the football a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. And, and not only just maybe the adjustments, we have a, an offensive lineman down for uh, Portland State. It looks like number 77, Adrian Limbrick. We'll check his status and also uh, take a short time out. The Grizz lead at 27-3, but Portland State is on the move. Adrian uh, Limbrick, the 310-pound offensive lineman, makes his way off the field. He's a junior college transfer out of San Diego, California, and he limped his way off under his own power. We certainly wish him the best and uh, hope for no injuries uh, as this game progresses here. But Portland State is on the move, first and 10. The ball is at the 23. And there is a 
a screen pass that is kicked out, and they get nice yardage on that, and uh, they faked it to Ruben and uh, go back across the field, and that was a nicely executed play right there. It was. It really was a good play by Shane McIntyre, the def who lines up in a defensive end spot, or I guess he's an outside linebacker. Yeah, you can yeah. see he's all over the tight end right there. Uh, Peter St. John, the left guard, just does a nice job of getting out and blocking him, but Shane McIntyre was all over the play. Portland State just executed it well. So we have a second and three. The ball is on the 16-yard line. They pick up seven yards on first down. Sawyer Smith under center trying to punch one in here. They give it to Joe Rubin. Rubin dances his way for a Portland State first down all the way down to the 11-yard line. Well, the good thing about having a back like Joe Rubin, Portland State continues to get in a two tight end set and just run zone. They can run zone either way. With a back like Joe Rubin, he's going to simply just read the hole and then hit it. He's going to make one cut, and he's going to get downhill hard. And, uh, you can see how effective that zone play has been all day, well, really all year for Joe Rubin in the Portland State Vikings. Joe Rubin played his high school football in the Seattle area. He's out of Tacoma, Washington. He has 100 yards, which is not easy to do against this Grizz defense, and he's just a big, strong guy. Bench presses over 400 pounds. He's an impressive back. And there's the handoff to Bodiford, and Sean Bodiford gets about four yards. He's inside the 10-yard line, and they're just trying to get the, the ball in the hands of their playmakers, and Bodiford's yeah. certainly a playmaker. Definitely. That, that's what the game plan has really shifted to this half, is really spreading the ball around a little bit. They've run this. Uh, they've faked that sweep to Bodiford about five or six times in the first half. This is the first time they actually gave it to him, and you can see picks up three or four, and with a chance, with Bodiford's speed, he has a chance to find a crease and take it to the distance every time they run that. Bierman on the tackle there, and Matt Lebsock in the game as well, and uh, good to see him in there as Sawyer Smith fumbles it, and then he is wrapped up by Dustin DeLuey. Dustin DeLuey on the sack after Smith fumbled the football, and Dustin DeLuey's been quiet today, but he makes a good play there, and that kid was a great football player, the player of the year in the state of Idaho out of Skyline High School in Idaho Falls, and he's a quick guy off that end, much like Mike Murphy is, and Sawyer Smith kind of bobbled it, and DeLuey makes him pay. Yeah, and those are the kind of plays you talk about kind of putting your head in your hands if you're Coach Walsh. Those are the kind of plays that just kill you. You got a good drive going, you got a second and six inside the 10 yard line, and then you fumble a snap, and now you're third and 15. The ball is marked at the 17 yard line. Third and 15. Sawyer Smith is back, and he's getting some pressure, and the ball is dropped across the middle, and a big hit by Kevin Edwards. Big hit by Kevin Edwards on senior day. Good to see him getting a chance in here to play a little bit of football. Hey, well to see our well-conceived play here by Portland State. They send Ruben out, force a matchup, and try to run a double move on a safety with Bodiford. You can see Sawyer Smith looking to it, but well covered by the safety on that side. He had to come back to his second receiver. As you can see right here, tried to get the double move. Uh, had to come back to his second wide receiver, but Kevin Edwards was there. And he laid a lick and a big boy and knocked him down. He's 260, Adam Whitehead, and Portland State is going for it on fourth down. Sawyer Smith is back to throw, and he's going to Whitehead, and it is complete down to the one-yard line, and it looks like they're going to mark it right at the one, give him a first down, and Portland State makes a nice play on fourth down there. They go back to Whitehead, the big 260-pound tight end. Oh, good execution right here. Yeah, I saw them working on this play uh, during pregame practice, running that tight end flag route right to the corner of the end zone, and just a well-executed route and throw. And they needed 15, and they got 15.1. <laughs> Now they run it with uh, the fullback, Alan Kennett, and he does not get in the end zone. The fullback is met at the goal line. We'll see who was in on the tackle there. Kyle Ryan gets a good push, and Tyler Joyce, and again, that linebacker play. Oh, yeah, not only one of them, but two of them, three <laughs> of them were there. What a great job to end the third quarter for Montana and force Portland State to go into the north end zone crazies to start the fourth quarter. The fans love it. The Grizz are leading 27-3, but Portland State's on the doorstep. Stay with us for the fourth quarter.